da 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 And welcome to 106 News. Sorry it's been so long since our first episode, but we're back in action. First things first, here's a look at homecoming week. As always, this year's court was elected by students in the high school. The young ladies will proudly represent Kaplan throughout all homecoming festivities. This year's court includes Captain Allen, Ryan Bizet, Maddie Landry, Ava Martin, Julia Smith, Jolie Thibodeau, and Sarah Walsh. The queen will be announced during halftime at the homecoming game on September 30th. Here's John Mason with a look at sports. First up, our varsity football team sits with a record of 1-2 and two with a recent win against the Eagles of St. John. We really put it together on the defensive and offensive side of football. Uh, I think if we just keep listening to the coaches and keep preparing the way that we have been, we'll be okay. Hoping to reach 500, the Hornets are back on the road against Bonneville and Angie. Kickoff is for 7 p.m. Both teams are coming off major competitions at Highland Road Park and the hills of West Feliciana. The teams will travel to Cade next weekend on October 1st for the Episcopal of Acadiana's race. I love that meet. It's very flat and it's a fast course and usually people feel it. Uh, hills are one of the main things that will just drain your energy. Uh, so that'll be great. I think we'll get some really good times. And finally, with injuries plaguing our girls volleyball team, our Lady Hornets are still persevering. We're trying really hard to all mesh together even though we're not used to playing with some people. You know, because some people are getting thrown into varsity positions um, with these injuries. Next up for the squad is a home game versus our in-town rival, False River. So come out to the game and let's pack the gym. The freshmen start at 4 p.m. with varsity and JV to follow. Thanks, John Mason. Now it's time for Travis O'Callaghan to tell us what's happening throughout the world. What's up, guys? It's Travis O'Callaghan here with Kern Events. We're going to do something a little different today. With the recent flood harming so many people, I decided to meet with a couple local farmers and see how they're recovering from the disaster. Many parishes in the state of Louisiana were affected by the recent flood, including our home, Poincapé. Homes and businesses were destroyed by the floodwaters, causing several people to rebuild and start over. Farming is a big part of Poincapé. Several people in our area contribute to society by farming. For many, it's all they've ever known. Since we were kids, really. Me and him used to farm for my dad, and then uh, he kind of started his own operation, and, and we started our own operation. Well, I am a third generation farmer here in Pointe Um So it was something I was born into, but always had a passion for. For many, farming is a way of life that requires constant care. In the morning, and come talk to everybody, get everybody going, get everybody assignments, and, and make sure everybody's doing what they need to do. We stay busy. Um, we, you know, from anywhere from planting the crops to fertilizing and cultivating, um, maintaining the farm, harvest season, uh, planting and taking care of the wheat in the winter time, uh, the cattle we calving out in the winter. So we're we're busy year round doing numerous activities here on the farm. Many farms in the Poincapé area were affected by the flood. The water harmed and damaged several different crops at many of the farms in Poincapé. The bean crop uh, was affected a lot, so uh, it just damaged the beans and a lot of, it went from what you say, being the best bean crop ever to one of the, wor one of the worst. Not to the extent of uh, probably most here in Poincapé. Uh, we did su suffer damage on our soybeans from some that were ready to even some of the later ones that were totally submerged in water. Father Brant of Morganza is conducting a special mass for farmers on the 21st of September. We gather together to pray, uh, and so we offer prayers uh, specifically in connection with, uh, with the crops. Uh, and it comes at a, a particularly important time, knowing that with all the, the rain we've been having this year and the flooding and this kind of stuff lately, uh, that that affects many people's homes, uh, 
uh, but also has great effects upon the crop sometimes too. Uh, and so we, we're going to gather together to pray on these uh, ember days of September, uh, to pray for the fruits of the harvest, uh, to pray for farmers and their families, uh, pray for, for good weather and protection of the crops, uh, as well as that the Lord would continue the work that he's already begun within each of our own hearts. 106 News now has a new segment called Cajun Corner. Today, Chance and Chandler are going to give us a rundown of dove and teal season. Hi, I'm Chandler. And I'm Chan. And this is Cajun Corner. What? On this part of the show, we'll be taking a look at the hottest hunting spots, fishing holes, and gadgets. And we'll also take a look on how to cook Kel's meal. Well, Chance, it's the beginning of the teal season and the end of dove. But don't worry, dove season will open up on October 8th. So here's something that we'd like to recommend, it's called the Dove Mojo. This is the Dove Mojo. It attracts birds by mimicking the motion of the bird's wings. You can also purchase the Dove Mojo around 30 bucks. Now that y'all have a cool tool to bag the birds, here's a delicious way to cook them. This is Dove Stew. This delicious dish is simple and fast to make. If you would like a copy, please send an email to chsbc106news at gmail.com. Stay tuned for more information about the outdoors. Now it's time for What's Buzzing from Caleb Goche. Here's What's Buzzing. Baby, I don't need dollar bills to have fun tonight. Baby, I don't need dollar bills to have fun tonight. This episode's movie, uh, Masterminds, is a true story that tells how three geniuses successfully made the largest cast of withdrawal illegally. The movie is based on 1997 Loomis Fargo robbery where one of the armed van guards played by Zach Galifianakis robbed the company he worked for of 17.3 million dollars. Steve Chambers double cross me. David? Yeah I'm right here sugar bush okay don't worry about a thing. Oh. Lord that's a cheap door. You gotta give me a three count next time. <laughs> PlayStation VR headset is coming to all you PlayStation users while the Xbox One users will have to wait for their own motion sickening device to come in the later future. Now in gaming we have new games coming out this year. FIFA 17 is coming and banning all the fun from the previous games. By previous I mean the 16 others from the 16 other years. FIFA 17 is going to be released on September 27, 2016. <laughs> That's all for this episode. Thank you for joining us at 106 News, where you hear all the buzz. Da, da, da. Da, da, da. Da, da, da. Anchors, toss two, take two. The queen will be announced during the... <laughs> Ava! <laughs> We are rolling. Don't stop it. Cross country voiceover, take one. Both teams are coming off major competitions at Highland Road Park and the Hills of West. West <laughs> with injuries plaguing our girls volleyball. Nope, I ain't gonna work. Volleyball team. Our Lady Hornets are still persevering. Up next for the squad is a home game in. What? Chance. What? Guess what's this weekend? It is dove season. Don't Stop. forget. Oh, wow. Action. Well, that new dove mojo would have helped Coach Thunderbird fight off our new school nope, mascot. Not Thunderbird. Speaking of the candidates, nope. <laughs>